from India's Tata Empire to the Lee Dynasty of Hong Kong. Family firms are pillars of Asian economies. A recent report by Credit Suisse showed family enterprises made up half the listed companies and 32% of total market capitalization in 10 Asian economies. But rising globalization and generational shifts are throwing up new challenges to these family-owned enterprises. Speaking at a recent roundtable at NUS Business School, Professor Marlene Dieleman says for such large companies, managing conflict is vital. Governance is very important and some of the problems is if the conflict from the family spills over to the business or the conflict from the business spills over to the family. And then you need governance structures, uh, probably not just for the business, but also for the family. It's a challenge that Shinta Vijaya Kamdani faced head on when she joined her father's company in 1999. I come in a picture in which um, uh, business are running okay, uh, doing quite well. We are expanding fast growth, but there is really no governing or system. So I remember very clearly there was in 1999, um, and I come to my father and I said, you know, um, if you want me to continue working in this family firm, we definitely have to change. So uh, I come with, with a proposal, and uh, what I did is, first of all, on the corporate side, um, I then, you know, kind of put together a plan in terms of bringing the businesses into four different pillars. And, and then, of course, uh, I put through a, a very clear systematic way in creating, restructuring, creating a holding company to monitor all the operating businesses. So I, when you talk about governance, I think that was the first time that we actually kind of introduced governance in a family business. This idea to rearrange her family's business led to the present-day form of the Sintessa Group, one of Indonesia's biggest and most successful companies, and which she now leads. More than 70% of Asian firms are family-owned, defined by Credit Suisse as those where a family or an individual within the family controls at least 20% of cash flow rights. These firms are also major employers, accounting for almost two-thirds of staff at listed companies in South Asia, and a third of those in North Asia. That makes their survival crucial to the region's emerging economies. As many Asian family firms make transitions from one generation to the next, another challenging issue, perhaps much more than corporate and family governance, is that of succession. With an increasing number of family feuds playing out in the public domain, such as the Ambani brothers' very public fight over their father's companies in India, some other Asian firms prefer to take a less combative approach. According to a 2012 Deloitte report, 81% of family firms' founders prefer their children take over their business, yet they're only likely to accede control whilst well into their 70s. This reluctance to retire is the other challenge which family firms, especially those operating in Asia, contend with. Chen Tin Yu, executive director of Malaysian pewter maker Royal Selangor, explains. The biggest challenge um, we face is uh, the personal decisions and the personal transitions that happen in retirement. And I think it's the most challenging thing in a family business, which is how do you go through a process of retirement? Apart from retirement, the first generation in a family firm are generally also less open to changes in decision-making or management. The biggest challenge when we look at a founder that started the business as an entrepreneur, they always believe that the way they're doing things is the right thing. And if I talk to my father today and ask him, he probably will still sing the same thing. But I think one thing that needs to be clear moving forward is, is that there can only be one captain in the ship. And that is really the biggest always problem of family business. Finding talented leaders to push the business to the next stage of growth is yet another challenge family firms face. Non-family firms can draw from the depth of their global operations, but family businesses have a more limited pool to choose from. If all of any members go up together, the view, the perspective they have probably are very similar. So you may have redundant information. Loyalty? Yes. But if you only stick to loyal, motivated members, you may not get the best talent you could have for the market. What is clear is that in order to succeed, family firms need to innovate, yet keep those core family values intact, which helped propel their business in the first place. For NUS Business School, this is Preetna Suri.